Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Wilson and this is our intro to our microprocessor. Now at first this processor can look pretty deceiving and pretty scary. Um, so what we're going to do is just kind of break down into sections uh, what this circuit does. And we're going to go ahead and perform a equation as well. Or an example problem, excuse me. So starting off, we have our three inputs, um, our clock, which we're all familiar with, and our read and write inputs. And what these determine, this read input will be used for our read-only memory or our ROM. And as the name suggests, it is for reading memory only. Um, so basically, we are going to store our example problem into this ROM, and it will go ahead and be distributed through what we call our data bus, which is this big black line. And what our data bus is, is basically this pathway for all sorts of data and inputs to be passed through the entirety of the circuit, except no two values can be passed through at the same time, which is why we have these little triangles here, which are not actually not gates. Um, what they are are called buffers. And what buffers do is hold data before being passed to the data bus so that no two values are being passed through the data bus, um, which I'll kind of go ahead and show you guys an example of that later. Um, but moving on from our ROM and our data bus and our buffers, we have our RAM. And our RAM is what we are going to be writing this data into. So this is what we make use for our write input. Um, our write input, once this data has been read, we were going to go ahead and write or store that into our RAM or a random access memory, which isn't actually random. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of choose what register we want to store this in. Um, just the same way we would actually read what kind of what ROM we want to use for our data. And this will be decided through our decoder, uh, which is a three input decoder. Um, up here, we have our DMUX, which will select, you know, which values or where our values will be passed through, either to B or A. Um, a has a direct route, or B goes through a register, uh, which will store that values there, those values there. And once these two values are loaded in, we will go ahead and select our different modes with their ALU, which is kind of the heart and soul of this circuit. It's kind of what determines everything. Yeah, it does the math for us. And we have seven modes. We have subtraction, addition, multiplication, um, nodding, uh, and, or, or exclusive, or. Um, and once all of that magic has happened in there, it'll be passed through our Q output, which will be stored here. And then we get to our, our accumulator. And our accumulator is kind of um, just another register for us to store our answer into, which will then be passed out, stopped by this buffer, and we will go ahead and pass that final answer through, which we will then be able to write that data into whichever register we choose. So now for our example problem, uh, today we'll be doing decimal 10 multiplied by decimal six. So that's 60, uh, 10 times six is 60. Uh, so starting off, what we're going to do is select our values. So one zero one zero is our 10 and this is our six here. We're gonna be using ROM zero and ROM one. Now, uh, in order to get the circuit started, what we need to do is select what we want to do with this, these two inputs. Well, since this is ROM or read-only memory, we're going to select our read input. And now with our decoder, we're going to select what ROM we want to actually look at. Um, so as you can see, our ROM input for zero is selected by this zero in our decoder. So once this is, and the reason, or the way we can check what values are being passed through the data bus is by clicking this little hand that we use and clicking on the data bus here to see that our 1010 is being passed through up to our DMUX. And now, since this isn't on, um, our 1010 is being passed straight into this wire here, which is now ready to be able to be stored into our B value, which we'll do by enabling this, and then just a quick uh, punch of the clock. So you can see here in our B value, we have A or decimal 10 stored in our B value. Next, we will store our A 
values in now. So we stored our B, now we have to store our A. And we're gonna read this ROM1 circuit by turning this on, so it's reading ROM1. And the way we can check that is clicking on our data bus. We have 0110 as being passed through our DMUX. And as you can see, we, this is still off, right? So this is still being passed through this wire here, but it actually won't change unless we flip the clock. Um, which is overall kind of the nicest thing about this circuit is that everything occurs on the positive clock edge. And what that means is that we're able to, everything is synced and that we're able to do a lot of different movements and a lot of different, you know, storaging of data within just a few clock cycles and having it on the positive edge allows for a lot more stuff to, to happen. And that's basically just the biggest um, takeaway from this whole circuit being positive edge triggered. Um, it's narrow, it's fast, it's clean, it's simple. And that is just the biggest benefit that we have for it. Um, but getting back to the microprocessor here in this circuit, the problem is uh, we're gonna actually route this to our A. So we already have a value in for B, that's our 1010. But now we're gonna need to route it into our A. So the, the way we're gonna do that is flip this switch on. So now it's being passed into A. So now we have our A and B being loaded in to our ALU, which will perform the magic for us. And now uh, what we need to do is use our select modes. And we're gonna start off with two multiplication and give us our least significant bits first. So doing this, we get our 1100, which is now loaded into our accumulator, but not quite in yet. And what we're going to do is kind of do what we did when we stored our data. We're going to enable this and the quick punch of the clock will store it into our accumulator. It is now being passed and ready to be put through the buffer into our data bus, which we will then be able to write that output into our registers. But there is a small problem. If we click on our data bus past this buffer here, we will see that the value six is still being read throughout our entire circuit. So when I go to try to uh, turn this accumulator out and to flip it past this buffer, we will get an error. And that's because two values are being passed through the data bus at the same exact time, and that cannot happen. So how do we fix this? Well, it's quite simple. We'll just go ahead and turn off our read so it stops reading. And now, once this accumulator out was on, we're able to pass through that value, which is now able to be um, wrote into any of our registers here. Um, and as you can see by our, by our setup, our least significant bit register will be our first one. So once we turn our write input on, we're able to actually select which register exactly we want to put it into. Um, so in order to do that, we will go ahead and select our this, our least significant bit register. Our write value is on, and just a quick punch of the clock, we'll store it into that register there. <laughs> now that we have our first, our least significant bit register loaded, we will now focus on our most significant bit register. Um, and the, the way we're going to do that is just clock, or turn everything off. Turn off our right. We're gonna go back to read and we're just gonna repeat, rinse and repeat that same exact process that we did. So I'm gonna go pretty fast through here. Um, Mindy slid on the video, but if not, just follow along with me. So we're gonna go ahead and read that ROM zero again. Make sure we're passing through that 1010 straight to B. We're gonna enable that B, click punch of the clock. Now we have our value for B stored. Now we're going to read ROM1, make sure we're passing through that 6. We're going to route it to A. Now we have this selected, but now we're going to select our mode to 3 because we want the most significant bits now. Pass through Q here. We're going to enable this accumulator, quick punch of the clock. And we're going to turn off our read value. We're going to throw this output through the data bus and now it's able to be stored, which we are going to store in our most significant bit RAM or our memory here. So what we're gonna do is turn on our right and we are going to select our second register. <laughs> Quick punch of the clock cycle. And there we have it. Our final output is 0011, 1100. And you may be asking why are there eight outputs 
when we only had two four bit numbers, but with the multiplication of two four bit numbers, you will get eight outputs in return, which is why we have eight outputs here. Um, and this 0011 to decimal is 60, which goes ahead and solves our equation. So that was pretty much a brief overview of how this microprocessor works. Um, but going back and you know taking away some of the the benefits of this, um, I talked earlier about the positive clock edge, but also the importance of hierarchical design in this pro in this processor. Without it, um, there would be lots and lots and lots of gates, and lots and lots of gates cost lots and lots of money, and having all of those gates wastes a tremendous amount of time creating the circuit. Um, just even kind of going back to how this ALU, this heart of this, this microprocessor was even created, we start back at this LB. And this was made up of four gates and three muxes, which also contain gates, to which then we were able to use that LB to create this ALU, which has multiple gates within, within inside this multiplier, this adder, and the subtraction. These all have gates within them as well as these muxes all have gates as well. And then finally, our microprocessor, which also contain gates all over. Um, so there's lots of gates, uh, lots of time if we didn't have this hierarchical design. And I think that hierarchical design is something that as, as engineers or students that we should all be grateful for because I think it provides a great deal of time saving. And I think it's something that We've been able to see the importance of over this entirety of this course, um, starting back at the gate level and being able to kind of create these wrappers, um, like I've talked in my previous video, or these containers um, that we're able to use later in order to create bigger and better circuits. Um, and that's through the use of hierarchical design. And I think that it is one of the most important things within this class that we could take away. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you.